Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on electricity. We're going to give kind of a brief introduction to it. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, so we've talked a little bit about electric fields, but what is electricity? Uh, we know it can kind of be dangerous. We know it's kind of shocking, but what exactly is it? Like, what makes it up or things along those lines? Well, electricity is actually the movement of charge. That's it. So if charge is moving, that is essentially electricity. And in physics, we call it electric current, or kind of the flow of electricity in that sense. Now, the basic components or things we can talk about are how fast is it flowing, and that is your uh, current, in this case, represented by the variable I, so electric current, uh, and it's measured in the units of amperes. You can talk about how much energy does each charge have as it flows. So is it carrying a lot of energy with it, or is it only a little bit? Um, you might think of it as kind of how fast it's flowing to some degree, but not necessarily just that. And that's represented by the variable V for voltage, and it's measured in volts. And then there's how hard is it for electricity to flow, and that is called resistance. It's uh, variable R, and it's measured in ohms with the kind of upside-down horseshoe, which is the omega symbol here. So here, um, just to summarize that real fast, electric current is how fast the charge is flowing. In other words, like how many charge charges per second are passing by. Voltage is how much energy each one has as it pass, passes by. And resistance is how much stuff is kind of in the way to prevent it from flowing as fast. So those are the kind of basic language in talking about electric circuits and movement of electrons. But that brings me to the point of, okay, well, if charge is electricity, moving charge is electricity, why do electrons move? Like, what causes them to move? Well, let's imagine a scenario here. Uh, we've got a negatively charged sphere, and we've got a positively charged sphere. And if we place an electron in between those two, what direction is the force on the electron? Take a second to think about it. All right, well, hopefully you realize that it's going to be attracted by the positive sphere and repelled by the negative sphere, so it's going to have a force to the right. That means it would move to the right. So if we put an electron here, there is some energy stored in its position based on the fact that it is um, can move towards this positive sphere. And so as it moves closer and closer towards it, it's going to release energy. Um, so we've stored a certain amount of energy based on its position here, uh, and that energy can be released in terms of a force causing it to move to some degree. Now, if instead we were to have fewer charge or fewer charges on each of these spheres, then that force would be a little bit less. So in this case, it would be a weaker force because the electric field is weaker, and so the force would be smaller. So we wouldn't have nearly as much energy stored in its position right here. If instead we increase the amount of charge that's on each of these spheres, we would have much more force acting on this electron, and so we would actually have a greater amount of energy stored. Um, the equivalence of these three scenarios would be like increasing the amount of gravity while keeping the height the same, um, or increasing or decreasing the amount of gravity. So um, by increasing the amount of charge, the electric field is stronger, the force is bigger, and more energy is stored. And so in this case, each electron, if we placed a bunch here, would have more energy per an electron than in a scenario like this one, or in a scenario like this one. So we could also say that since it has more energy for each electron, if we placed multiple ones right here, that it has a greater voltage. And this is essentially what voltage is, is it's how much energy is it stored um, per a charge, or released if it's passing through. And so that brings us to this idea of why do electrons move? Well, batteries work by having a buildup of charge or lack of, um, well, buildup of charge, either positive or negative, on either side. So essentially, electrons are being pushed by the electric field through a wire. So electrons are moving because there's an electron or electric field applying a force to them. So in this case, the negative side of the battery literally acts kind of like our negative sphere here. And the positive side of the battery literally acts like our positive sphere here. And so we drive the electrons through the circuit based on that force that's being applied. Now, some paths are easier to follow and move along than others because they conduct electricity. So that explains why the electrons follow, let's say, a wire through a light bulb and then out the other side, as opposed to just jumping across through midair. 
They can if there's enough energy there, but it takes a tremendous amount of energy to do that. So they tend to only go along kind of the path of least resistance, we might say. So to summarize, why do electrons move? Essentially, if there's an electric field, it causes a force on them, which causes them to move. Or it could cause them to move if we kind of let them move in that sense. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. A one to two sentence summary and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.